breaking the wall of blindness. How neuroengineering can relink brain and body. Yael Hanain, Tel Aviv University. 21 years ago, I was just getting ready to start college. I, I guess I, I have to complete the sentence. I uh, uh, did not realize it would be so public, but yeah, I had totally different things on my man, mind back then, so I completely missed this event, and I'm, I'm very, very happy and, and uh, uh, very, very uh, grateful for the opportunity to share this, uh, this time uh, with you here 21 years later, but uh, still. So um, what, what I want to do uh, is to um, uh, expose to you uh, a, a research topic which is uh, called neuroengineering and our contribution to this uh, topic and rather than going directly into uh, such strong and, and uh, somewhat intimidating concepts such as blindness and neuroengineering, I wanted to start with something calm and beautiful. And it has nothing to do with the genes of the orchid, it just has to do with our ability to see it and to appreciate uh, its beauty. And the point that I'm trying to, 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 to make here is the fact that vision is such an obvious capacity of ours that we rarely actually pay attention to how much uh, ingenuity, if you will, or how much sophistication is involved in such a uh, very basic capacity. And on the other hand, if I would ask you uh, to take a picture of an orchid, just like the picture that you see here, you would know, you would appreciate the fact that you need a very, very special camera. You, know, you would need fantastic optics, you would need a very, very sensitive film if you use old-fashioned camera, or you would need a very, very fancy uh, new chip if you're using a digital camera. And it's really, really important if you want to capture all the different things that you have in, in this image of the orchid, the different colors, the perception, the contrast, what we often forget is that our eyes doing uh, this uh, image processing, this uh, image capturing extremely effectively. And the, the beauty uh, in, in understanding uh, how our eyes are actually doing this task so effectively and so beautifully is, is apparent when we actually look at how our eyes constructed. And for an engineer as a physicist, I think it's very rewarding to see that our eye is not very much different from a camera, but it does it in much, much better way. And uh, I think it would take a long time before we can actually build cameras which are as sophisticated and as clever as our eyes. So typically, what we are familiar with is just the exterior of the eye and the pupil, this black hole through which light goes in into the eye. And, but if we look carefully into the eye, what we see is that we have all the different components. We have the shutter, which is really the iris. We have the lens that can uh, change its focal plane. So we can look at uh, nearby objects. We can look at faraway objects. And then the magic is probably uh, what you could think of as the film or the chip, and that's the uh, retina. This is uh, a very, very thin layer at the back of our eye the process that does all the uh, light capturing and processing of information and delivering the information to the brain. It's not by incident that you have uh, these red, green, and blue cells at the back. Uh, they are specialized cells that can capture different colors, and they're located right at the center of our eye. When, the, uh, uh, when we're in a dark room, and the, the, the lights are dimmed, uh, the iris opens up just like in a camera, we need to bring in more light, and then at the exterior of our eye, we don't have this color sensitivity, and this is when we become effectively color blind. So it's, it's, it's a beautiful system, and just to uh, demonstrate, so if we have an image, it hits the eye, hits the retina, and then delivered to the optic nerve. So it's a beautiful, sophisticated system. The trouble, of course, is that a lot of things can go wrong. And each one of these elements, if it doesn't work properly, this is where blindness sets in. And one particular and uh, very, very uh, problematic issue is basically the degeneration of these particular cells. So this system can remain perfectly uh, fine. Everything else is just uh, intact, but we lose the capacity to see just because we lost uh, these cells. 
And this is where uh, blindness sets in. And we try to <laughs> introduce the drama by uh, visualizing blindness. Now, blindness is something that we all experience every time we close our eyes or every time we uh, turn off the, the lights. But uh, just to emphasize, uh, so uh, blindness is not uh, complete uh, 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 losing all capacity, but 80% of our activity depends on, on vision. So it's a very, very dramatic thing. And this kind of degeneration that I demonstrated to you is a, a, a really prevalent and is a very cause, a major cause of blindness, and in particular in, in aging population. There are uh, cases of uh, degeneration which are genetic, which occur at relatively young age, but for the most part, it's something that takes place uh, as, as we age. And in particular, when we talk about the aging population of Europe, the aging population in some countries in Asia, in, in the US, uh, it's becoming more and more of an issue, and an issue that, as society, we have to deal with. And the um, final uh, important comment in that context is the fact that, at the moment, there's no cure, there's no drug, there's no simple solution that can just be uh, resolve the, uh, this issue. OK, so now, as engineers, uh, there is a solution, or we believe there is a solution. And it may sound as complete science fiction to you, but over the last uh, several um, decades, uh, several very, very big groups, including, and in particular here, I'm showing results from uh, a US uh, group and uh, uh, a very, very uh, successful German team that have produced uh, retinal implants. And the idea is very simple. The idea is that uh, we have to replace those photosensors and we have uh, electronic chips that can sense light. So what's uh, the most natural solution is to take these electronic chips with fantastic resolution and introduce them to the back of the eye. And it sounds completely crazy. Uh, and it, takes, it would take still a lot of work in order to make this uh, a reality, but it's possible, and it's doable, and it was demonstrated that it can restore some uh, visual. At the moment, with very limited acuity, but it has been demonstrated. So the challenge, the remaining challenge, or the wall, if we speak in the terminology of this conference, is to do it at high resolution, to do it at the point that we can have such chips available, readily available, that we have the sur surgical procedures. And from our perspective, from the engineering perspective, we're looking for materials, for methods, how to do it right. Because the important thing to remember is that these devices were not developed intentionally. The device itself was designed intentionally for this particular application, but the technology as a whole was developed for entirely different things. These chips were devised for uh, your computers, for your cellular phones. Uh, this is what they're uh, suited for. They were not designed, this, this is, these are made of typically silicon. Uh, they're not designed to be put uh, inside uh, the eye. So the kind of challenges we have in this field is to find the materials, to find the approaches, to find the engineering, how to, and this is, this is where near engineering comes about, to do this work. Um, what I'm showing you here are some kind of um, uh, tests we do in the lab. These are neurons, okay? So neurons are, uh, in this particular case, are taken from the brains of, of rats, and we place them on microelectrodes that we build in the lab, and you can see that uh, we can visualize them, we can talk with them, we can work with these uh, cells, even though they're very, very small. So this electrode that you see now at the background, this is a, a 30 micrometer uh, electrode. So the round thing there is half the size of uh, the diameter of your hair. Okay, so it's a very, very small thing. Uh, and it's very, very possible, readily possible, to take neurons either in the lab setting or in, um, in, in real um, uh, physiological setting and to communicate, to build the link between electrodes and neurons. Neurons uh, are sensitive to uh, electrical stimulation and we can do that. So our specific contribution to this field is to look for materials that can make this link, okay, can make the link between electronic devices and biology. These are two different worlds. Uh, one is soft, 
made of ions sensitive to ionic currents. The other one uses electrons, is typically rigid. Um, very, very different worlds. And one approach that we've been promoting is to look for a material. In this particular case, this is a, a nanomaterial, uh, carbon nanotubes, for those of you who may have heard uh, the term. And the carbon nanotubes are basically used as this intermediate uh, material. And the reason why we chose this particular material is because neurons like it. And that's a very, very critical thing. They just uh, uh, mature and develop. And, and the, the picture that you see on the left, these are uh, two types of uh, uh, brain cells that we have in our brain. And they developed and, and uh, uh, became very, very um, well attached to the system. And if we th try to explain, and that's one uh, of our main objectives, is to explain to ourselves to understand why does the uh, cells like uh, these surfaces so much? And, and, and in, in a very, very heuristic terms, it comes about from the fact that they resemble the natural uh, environment that the cells are used to. So it's a very rough and porous system. But these systems also, these carbon nanotubes, also have to accommodate the electronics. It also has to be compatible with uh, microelectronics. So we had to develop a method uh, that engineers in fabrication facilities can actually go and produce such samples in, in a very uh, simple way. So we have developed an initial system that we can test in the lab and prove to ourselves that these systems are working. But then the next challenge, and that's the, uh, the, the important point, is that we also have to make sure that these things are compatible with flexible technology. And that was the point where we had to look for entirely different approaches of how to produce things. We can't produce things the same way that people have been producing electronic chip for the electronic industry. We now have to look for ideas, completely different ideas, how to take these rough surfaces and introduce them into a system that looks uh, um, just like electronic circuit, other than the fact that this electronic cir circuit can be bent, stretched, and can survive for as long as we want in a biological environment. So the uh, black lines that you see there, these are the very, very rough uh, surfaces that you see on the left. And the support is actually made of silicone. So it's not silicon. It's exactly the same material that implants uh, are made of. So it's a biocompatible, very friendly uh, soft material. So if I put everything uh, together, uh, what we've managed to do, uh, and, and one of the th this is what we're uh, heading uh, right now, is to take these devices, basically demonstrate that we can use them in a very friendly, very high efficacy manner, interface with nerve cells. We can record from them. We can stimulate them. We can do it in in vitro environment. We can do it in in vivo environment. And basically, we believe that we constructed a technology that can be uh, accommodating these both uh, worlds. And to finish, um, I, I try to be a little bit philosophical. And I've chosen uh, these words. As you can see there, these are uh, fairly uh, old. And the, the point here, or the, the, what, uh, the message here, is that we often, in, in our lives, need contrast in order to appreciate things. We need dark to appreciate our ability to see. Uh, we need uh, light in order to see colors. And I think now, when you know a little bit more about how the eye is constructed, you can understand that the uh, analogy here is, is really uh, a real thing, and you can really uh, understand and appreciate the complexity and the beauty of, uh, of our visual system. So thank you very much.